We have around about one third of the collection which is on display and two thirds which are in storage. I assume everybody can see and hear me. I'm just going to interrupt you very quickly, Ken. I would recommend for people, if you've still got the view of everybody's um, videos, if you go to the top right corner of your screen, there should be a little button that says view. If you click that, you've then got the option of speaker view or gallery view. It was around about mid-March and we really started to close and uh, with the, the rate of COVID rising and we didn't think that we were going to be closed for long, probably a week or two. We had never done anything really online before in terms of the courses or lectures on uh, online. Most of what we did was in person and very much geared around the collection itself, handling sessions, etc. So this was all a new learning experience. And I have to say, I was quite nervous when we started. When uh, COVID uh, hit, <laughs> um, it, it changed everything for, for learning in the Egypt Centre. Um, our learning programme was very deeply rooted within the space and with, with, um, within the museum. And it was uh, very entrenched in things like handling objects, being less than two metres away from each other. It wasn't a COVID friendly programme, naturally. The format of the Egypt Centre courses are very different from what they were in the past. Usually it would be a class of 15 people maximum because we very much focus on the Egypt Centre objects, having the audience handle the collection as much as possible. Whereas when we're doing it online, they can't get access to the objects physically. They can't handle the objects. Yes, we can show photographs of the objects, which I do to try and make it a, as object focused as possible, but also to give them a better insight into the Egypt Centre collection. And while that's a bit of a downside, the fact that they can't handle the objects in person, we still try and work a lot with the students as well as the lecturers that we have in Swansea. Uh, a lot of it, of course, is digital. Uh, but what I have been doing is coming into the museum and doing virtual handling sessions. Usually the students would get to handle the objects in person, but since it's not possible with the restrictions, I've been coming in and handling objects that they have selected for presentations and coursework. It's quite mind-blowing actually when you think about it. We used to do Ken's handling classes for 15 people and now we're looking at 150 people for a course. You might have seen the lovely time-lapse video that Stephanie, who is the project manager for this stage, put up on Twitter. And what I particularly like about this is the satisfaction of seeing that pile of dirty pieces of smoke sponge. You know, I think I think we were aware as staff that this wasn't going to go away quickly. And so it's it sort of started with schools saying to me, like, oh, have you got anything we can we can give to our pupils? And I, I didn't really. Um, you know, I had some worksheets I could send them, but nothing that, you know, nothing that was based in principles of digital learning because I'm a big believer that there's the, there are positives and negatives to digital learning and in-person learning they are not the same there's none neither are better but you can't pick up something from a physical state space and just dump it in a digital space and expect it to work exactly the same way they do you know you do need to adapt them and you need to be mindful of that I know there's been a lot of debate uh, within the museum community on whether you should charge for digital learning. In some ways that decision was made for me because I had to, I had to make up the lost income. Hey everyone, so today we're going to be learning all about ancient Egyptian numbers. Now today we would write our numbers in what are known as numerals, such as the ones you can see here. But the ancient Egyptians would have written their numbers in hieroglyphs. So let's have a look and see what hieroglyphs they would have used. So, if we are to write the number 1 in Egyptian hieroglyphs, we would draw a line like this. This is referred to as a unit. I think having that perspective of being the end user, so I've experienced the catalogue as a student, as a volunteer, as a member of the public, as a mother trying to find things that my kids want to look at. So being able to look at it from that perspective and then create something to meet those needs has been really, really handy, actually. The volunteers and, and all of the staff, we really are a family. And the sort of the, the COVID-19 pandemic and that has been very, very difficult for us because prior to that, 
Um, you know, the museum was open. We were open Tuesday to Saturday, 10 till 4. And our volunteers, basically, they were the gallery assistants and leaders, and they would show the members of the public round. Hello, everyone. My name is Hannah, and I am the Learning and Engagement Officer at the Egypt Centre, Swansea University. Today, we're going to be looking at mummification. Jackals were seen prowling around the cemeteries looking for a tasty snack. And so were associated with the god of mummification, Anubis. Models like this one were often placed on top of the coffin of the tomb owner to protect it. So then, we've got a picture of what seems to be, by this date, a nice domesticated cat having something to eat there, fish. Well, it was actually the Egypt Centre that made me want to come to Swansea Uni for my undergrad. I came here for a visit probably in 2000, I think it was, with my auntie's school. And I was just absolutely hooked. I was like, yeah, this is where I'm going to uni. I don't need to look at anywhere else. They've got real Egyptian objects and you get to handle them and actually work with the collection. What more could you want? You know, we're always responding to feedback. Um, how, you know, after a few sessions, a teacher said, oh, these are great. I really love the resources. But I wish I could get the other workshops resources without having to do the other workshops. So we added that as an add on to the workshops. We're always responding and listening to our, our communities. I'm going to go for Ptolemy the 6th and 8th. And I bet it's 4th and 6th. Dead right, you got the right ones. <laughs>